This week we're going to be doing um, the chemical methods of control, disinfectants, and antiseptics. Um, later we'll do one on antimicrobial drugs. So what you're going to be doing this week, you're going to be looking to see if dis different disinfectants or antiseptics, how well they work on a particular microbe. You're going to have um, five different uh, plates that you're going to use. I only have one of each thing here, but you would have five, okay? Um, we're going to be testing disinfectants and antiseptics. You want to keep in mind that disinfectants are things that are used on surfaces or like your floor, your table, your toilet, things like that. They're not meant to be on or in the human body. Um, disinfectants are designed to kill um, or inhibit and remove potential pathogens. Um, bleach, alcohol, um, lice, all things like that are disinfectants. Antiseptics, on the other hand, are used on living tissue. So like you put isopropyl alcohol in your skin or mouthwash in your mouth or something like that. So we want to test the effects of these. Now I also would like for you, if you want to, to bring in something from home that you normally use as a disinfectant, especially if it claims on the bottle to be a disinfectant or an antiseptic, or you could bring something that's not and see how, how big of a difference it is. So um, what you're going to do is, like I said, you'll have five plates. And each plate is going to have a different microbe on it. Um, we're going to have gram-positive bacteria. We're going to have gram-negative bacteria. We're going to also use Bacillus cirrus at 24 hours and then at seven days to see if there's a difference, if it's spore forming or not. So on each plate, you'll have a different microbe. The other thing is on each plate, you're going to add a disc with each of the disinfectants on it. Now, we don't have the color-coded disc that it mentions in the lab manual. We only have white ones. So you're not going to be able to code them. So you'll have to write on the plate what they are. And so you'll want to divide the plate up into fifths. And I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but to divide your plate into fifths, just do an upside down Y and then lines between those two parts there. And then you can write the name of the disinfectant, hydrogen peroxide. Then you can write the name of the disinfectant on that particular zone, okay? You would also have labeled your plate with the name of the bacteria that you put on it and the name of your group, okay? Now this time is going to be a little bit different than what we've done in the past. We're actually going to inoculate the plate with a swab instead of with a loop. So what you're going to do, I'm not going to flame the swab, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to take your your uh, bacteria that you're putting on the plate. Like I said, you'll have five of them, but I just have one here. Using your sterile technique, you're still going to flame the tube. You're going to go down there and pick up the bacteria. You want lots of it. And this time, when you do your plate, instead of making a line or just one part, you're actually going to cover that plate. So if you just keep turning it and turning the swab, going in different circles, back and forth, different directions, the idea here is to make what's called a lawn of bacteria. You want every single millimeter of that plate covered in bacteria. Then you would take your swab and put it into an anti, um, a biohazard bag or, or a beaker of bleach. The swabs will either be in containers like this where they've been autoclaved or they'll be in single, um, single wrappers, okay? If they are in single wrappers, take it out, use it, don't put it back in the wrapper, throw the wrapper away and put the swab in the anti, um, in the disinfected jar or into the bag, okay? Now, you're gonna have four or five beakers of disinfectants, and they'll be labeled. Um, this one's alcohol, but you'll have alcohol, bleach, hydrogen peroxide, um, iodine, and then if you wanna bring a fifth one in from your home, you can use that one also. So for each of these, you're gonna dip a disc into it and you're gonna put the disc in that section that you labeled on the plate. Now, in order for us to do this, we wanna do it as sterile as possible. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, you have little beakers of ethyl alcohol, and you're gonna dip your tweezers or forceps in the alcohol, and then you're actually gonna flame them. Okay, so you're actually sterilizing the um, forceps, whatever they're called. And then you want to grab one of the little discs after it's cooled off a little bit. I'm not worried about sizzling bacteria this time. I'm worrying about burning the disc. So after it's cooled off some, or mostly, you're going to grab one disc. And they're kind of stuck together, so try to get only one. Okay, and now I'm going to dip this in my disinfectant. That was the alcohol I used for the flaming. 
I'm going to dip it in my disinfectant. Ooh, it's still hot. <laughs> Do you hear that? Um, and you want it saturated, but you don't want it dripping. So I'm just going to press it along the side of the beaker. It says to press it on an absorbent towel, but I think this is just as effective. And now we have the bacteria on here. So we're going to put the disc on this section that was labeled for that antibiotic. And then you want to press down on it a little bit just to make it stick, but you don't press it into the media. Okay? And so you'll do that for, um, okay, so you had five plates, each labeled with a different microbe, with a different bacteria on them. And then on all five plates, you're going to put your four or five disinfectants, the four that we have in class, and then if you wanted to bring a fifth one. Okay, so they have five plates with four or five disinfectants, but each plate has a different microbe on it. And then the second class period, so this will go over two class periods. The second class period, you're basically going to be reading what's called the zone of inhibition. A zone of inhibition means that after the bacteria has grown, you'll see that there's an area of clearing around the disc itself. So the larger the area of clearing, the better that disinfectant is at inhibiting the bacteria. Now it's called the zone of inhibition and not the zone of death because we know that the bacteria didn't grow, but we don't know that it's completely dead. So that's the difference between bacteriostatic and bactericidal. Um, to test if it was bactericidal, we'd have to try to subculture that area that looks dead and see if it regrows without the disinfectant present. If it's bactericidal, it wouldn't regrow. If it's just bacteriostatic, that means it inhibits the microbe, but it doesn't kill it completely. So the second um, class period after these have sat in the incubator, um, you're gonna be looking for that zone of inhibition. And we should be able to see that disinfectants work on different bacteria. So maybe this one works better on gram positive, or that one works better on gram negative. Um, so also remember, you're gonna wanna put your plates in the incubator, lid side down, auger side up. 